Transportation in Plants As plants are stationary and perform less number of metabolic activities, their energy requirement is less and hence the transportation system is less developed as compared to human beings. Conducting tissues like xylem and phloem carry out transportation in plants. Water and minerals absorbed by root hairs are transported through xylem bundles, whereas food manufactured by leaves is translocated all over the plant with the help of phloem bundles. All the parts of the plant are interconnected with these conducting tissues. Water from the soil enters the root hairs, epidermis, cortex, endodermis and then into the xylem bundles through the process of osmosis. Minerals are absorbed from the soil by the cells of the root hair mostly through active transport that is absorption of minerals against concentration gradient with expense of energy. This continuous movement of water from the soil to the xylem tissue creates root pressure which can push water upward. However, this pressure is not enough to push the water up in tall trees, but it is enough to push up the water and minerals in small plants like herbs, bushes and even small trees. Loss of water from aerial parts of the plant in the form of vapor is called transpiration. Transpiration from the surface of the leaves results in a decrease in the water content of the leaf cells. The water which is lost from the leaf cells is replaced by the water from the xylem vessels of the leaf. Xylem vessels of the leaf in turn take water from the xylem of the stem and xylem of the root. Thus, transpiration creates a sort of pull or suction called transpiration pull. Root pressure along with transpiration pull results in the movement of water and minerals from the soil to the topmost parts of even a tall tree upwards despite of gravitational pull. Transport of food and other substances The food which is manufactured by the leaf cells is transported to each and every cell of the plant for nutrition and to the roots, fruits and seeds for storage. This process is called translocation. It takes place through phloem in upward as well as downward direction. Food that is glucose synthesized by cells in the green leaves is converted into sucrose and actively transported into the companion cells of nearest phloem tissue with the expense of energy from ATP. This causes decrease in the concentration of water molecules in that area. As a result, water enters into the phloem tissue through osmosis resulting into increased turgor pressure in the phloem cells. Food starts moving from the region of high pressure to region of low pressure. On reaching the storage tissues like root, fruit 
etc., sucrose is again actively transported into the cells and converted into starch. As starch is insoluble in water, the osmotic pressure of the storage cells does not increase. In the flowering season, starch, which is an insoluble form stored in the roots or stem, is reconverted into sucrose, which is soluble form and is translocated to the buds, assisting in their growth. Excretion The process by which unwanted harmful substances are eliminated from the body is called excretion. In human beings, the excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, urinary bladder and urethra. Kidneys remove the waste products from the blood in the form of urine. Kidneys are a pair of bean-shaped structures lying at the back of the abdomen, one on either side of the vertebral column. Kidneys filter about 190 liters of filtrate a day and produce 1 to 1.9 liters of urine a day. The basic structural and functional unit of a kidney is a nephron. Each nephron towards its upper end consists of cup-shaped structure called Bowman's capsule containing a bundle of blood capillaries called glomerulus. Thin inner lining of Bowman's capsule and thin walls of blood capillaries of the glomerulus allow a large portion of the blood except big molecules like proteins, RBCs, etc. to get filtered into the Bowman's capsule. This is called glomerular filtrate. The blood, now free from these waste materials, is taken to the heart through the renal vein. From Bowman's capsule, the glomerular filtrate passes further through the nephron tubule where reabsorption of water and other useful substances take place. The resultant concentrated filtrate containing the waste matter forms the urine. The urine, thus formed eventually, enters the ureters and ultimately reaches the urinary bladder. Urine is stored for some time in the urinary bladder and periodically thrown out of the body through the urethra. Besides kidneys, the lungs and the skin also help in the process of excretion. Lungs excrete carbon dioxide and skin excretes urea in the form of sweat. When kidney fails, an artificial device is used for removing nitrogenous waste matters from the blood. This device is known as dialyzing machine and the process is known as hemodialysis. Excretion in plants Plants do not possess any excretory system for the removal of waste matter. In plants, the excretory wastes are stored in the vacuoles of the cells of leaves, flowers and fruits besides bark of the trees. They are thrown out through periodic shedding of leaves, flowers 
fruits, bark, etc. Gaseous excretory materials are eliminated by diffusion. Some waste substances are also excreted into the soil around the plants. Some plant wastes such as rubber, latex, gum, resins and essential oils like eucalyptus oil and sandalwood oil are beneficial to human beings. Some plants store waste in the form of needle-shaped calcium oxalate crystals called raphides. These crystals hurt and cause itching. Example in alocasia leaves. Coordination A multicellular organism consists of various tissues, organs and organ systems which perform various life processes. These organ systems are structurally and functionally coordinated with one another. Plants absorb water containing dissolved minerals from the soil through the roots. At the same time, they continuously lose water from the leaves through stomatal openings by the process of transpiration. This process creates a transpiration pull. This transpiration pull is the force in upward direction with which the water is pulled up from the roots to the leaves. This is the ascent of sap. The absorbed minerals are utilized in various metabolic activities. Thus, the process of transpiration, absorption of water containing dissolved minerals and ascent of sap are related. But for these processes to take place, the soil where the plant grows must have enough water with dissolved minerals. Similarly, in humans, all the organ systems are interrelated. The digested food containing glucose, amino acids, fatty acids is absorbed by the body. The oxygen that is taken in during breathing is used to obtain energy by breaking down the glucose molecules by the process of respiration. The nervous system initiates these actions as well as coordinates the body's interaction with the environment, monitors organs, coordinates the activities of muscles and regulates behavior. Homeostasis Any malfunctioning at any stage in the various life processes in organisms may lead to a disorder. So, for proper growth and development, the various tissue systems and organ systems must function in perfect coordination with each other as well as maintain a constant internal condition in response to the changes in the external environment. Organisms maintain their body in a stable condition by adjusting the body temperature, level of enzyme, amount of oxygen, carbon dioxide and hormones in the blood. This process is called as homeostasis. Coordination in plants Plants exhibit a wide range of movements mainly in response to stimulus. Unlike animals, they lack a nervous or muscular system. They exhibit two types of movements. 
These are A. Tropic movement or growth dependent movement. B. Nastic movement or growth independent movement. Tropic movement or growth dependent movement in plants. The movement or growth in plants that depends on the direction of an external stimulus is called tropism or tropic movements. Plants show different kinds of tropic movements. These are phototropic movement, geotropic or gravitropic movement, hydrotropic movement, chemotropic movement, phototropic movement. The movement or growth of any part of a plant in response to light is called phototropic movement or phototropism. When a potted plant is kept near a window in a room, it is observed that the stem bends slightly towards the window, that is, it moves towards sunlight. Phototropic movement is regulated by a hormone called auxin that helps the cells to grow longer. When the growing shoot detects light, auxin is synthesized at the tip of the shoot. The auxin diffuses towards the part of the shoot which is not in sunlight and stimulates the cells of that part to grow longer. This causes the shoot to bend towards light. Geotropic or Gravitropic Movement Geotropic movement is the movement or growth in response to gravity. The roots of plants show geotropic movement as they grow in the direction of the gravitational pull. Hydrotropic movement Hydrotropic movement is the movement or growth in response to water. The roots of plants show hydrotropic movement and always bend towards water. Chemotropic movement Chemotropic movement is movement in plants in response to chemicals. The growth of the pollen tube towards the ovules is an example of chemotropic movement.